Ask Brother Wayne if you would. Bless her off. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we have Lord, thank you for giving us all the Lord's grace and all day. Thank you, Lord, for this and other privileges that you give to come back into your house again tonight. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us throughout the last few days. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, Lord, this time we'll bless this offer. Lord, bless those that have it again, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to lay a double portion upon the ones that don't. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be in the service tonight, and then everything that's said and done. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, if there's one here lost, Lord, if there's just come to know you, Lord, before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be with us throughout the remainder of this week, watch over me, guide, and direct us. Lord, we give you the praise and honor and glory for it all. We ask it in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Uh, good to see each and every one in the Lord's house. And thank the Lord for another day that he's blessed us with. Uh, got much to be in prayer about tonight. Many that needs our prayers. Uh, so I remember uh, families that's lost loved ones. I just remember the Doc Shelton family. Uh, Doc passed away this morning. And I uh, just remember his family. And uh, also uh, uh, the Jeff King family. Uh, I just remember that family in prayer. Um, I just remember uh, Oliver's sick, and uh, I just continue to remember 
Brother Gary and her prayers. Uh, uh, let's remember uh, uh, all of our, uh, those in our church that's uh, dealing with different things. Uh, we pray one for another. Uh, let's remember uh, Richard Atkins. It's uh, Whitney's uh, grandpa. He had an open heart surgery today. Uh, so let's keep him in our prayers. Um, let's see here. Good to see Roger back with us. Let's keep him in our prayers. And Brother Thomas, keep him in our prayers as well. Uh, good to see Allison with us tonight. Let's keep her in our prayers. We've been praying for her, and the Lord just his hand continue to be upon her with her heart issues. And, and uh, good to see Teresa. Let's keep her in prayer. And, uh, Miss Nancy and Joel, let's remember them. All right. Anybody got a spoken or request? I appreciate that, Bernie. Let's remember Bill Ponder in prayer. Remember that. Remember Bob Harris, yeah. Remember that. Uh, Remember that. And spoke requests and lift the hand. And saw Kim would come around to the altar. That's Brother Patrick.
Anybody got a word of testimony heart or a song? Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I like this one better if it, if it cooperates. It's been cooperating lately. All right. Turn with me in Luke chapter number 9. start in uh, verse number 28, Luke 9:28. 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and, uh, Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which is Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. I'll stop there. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word tonight. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you just get us out of the way tonight. Lord, you'd use us for your glory. In your honor, Lord, we love you, and we thank you, Lord, tonight. Just meet with us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Um, very familiar scripture here about the Mount of Transfiguration. And the uh, Mount of Transfiguration is, is also found in, in, in Matthew 17 and also Mark chapter number 9. Uh, but... Um, as as uh, Mark or uh, Matthew seventeen uh, describes that when the Lord took uh, uh, James and and John uh, Peter James and John up to the mountain to pray and, and the Bible says in seventeen that he was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And uh, you've heard me say before, I, I believe that, that what they saw there was the, the glorified Christ, the, the glorified body uh, that, uh, that, we're, that, that Christ had and has now, but what we're going to have too. Amen. We're going to take on a glorified body just like His. Uh, but also, he, there appeared uh, uh, Moses and Elijah. And uh, I got to thinking about this, and it just caught my attention today as I was reading this in Luke chapter number 9. I noticed this. It says that uh, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. 
Now, why would Moses and Elijah be uh, meeting uh, with, uh, with Christ upon this mount uh, and talking of his decease, of his death, basically, uh, that he would accomplish at uh, Jerusalem? Now, let's think about what Moses was. Moses, uh, how he, uh, by, the, by the help of God, uh, how he brought uh, into the, the law and presented the law of God to his people. Jesus fulfilled that law. Jesus was uh, 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 Moses and Elijah's successors, wouldn't he? How that he fulfilled the law of Christ through himself. Moses presented it. Jesus fulfilled it. That makes sense? All right. And then you, you look about how that Elijah was, was the, uh, a prophet there. And, and how that he, he prophesied. Of the things of God, and and uh, not only but Elijah, but uh, all all down through uh, the prophets there that uh, that for, uh, would uh, uh, prophesy and, and and tell about what Christ would do and how Christ would come and and uh, how that He would fulfill the things of God and fulfill the law and how that uh, 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 Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies about Himself. Amen. And the prophecies uh, uh, that he hadn't fulfilled, he's going to, ain't it? Amen. Amen. He's a going to, and I believe it's going to be very soon. Uh, but as as he began to talk, they they were speaking of his decease, which he should uh, accomplish at, at Jerusalem. And I thought about the finished work that Jesus did there on the cross of Calvary, how he accomplished something that couldn't be done under the law. All the, the, the millions, no doubt, of, of animals that were sacrificed, let alone the, the, the lamb that was slain there on the Day of Atonement, but all the, all the animals there in the outer court on the altar that was presented daily there, the burnt offerings, could not accomplish what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. He done something. when he, You've heard me say, when he cried, it is finished, he meant what he said. He finished a work that nobody could do. Amen. Uh, but when he cr- uh, cried, it is finished, a way was made for you and I to get to God. Amen. Amen. The veil was rent from top to bottom, signifying a way had been made. I love that song. Jesus built a bridge so that I could go to, to get to him. And I'm, I'm glad that we can get to God tonight. Amen. Amen. So that glorified body like they saw, his raiment, the Bible says there in, in, in Matthew 17. I love to, I love to uh, uh, read the different accounts there. It says that he's, his raiment... Uh, 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 there in, in, in uh, see, let's read uh, Mark 9's. His raiment uh, became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. I begin to read in the Word of God that, uh, uh, that friend, that we're going to be wearing a right, white robe too. Amen. That white represents the righteousness that's in Jesus. Amen. The elder said, Who are these that are arrayed, arrayed in white robes and which come thou? And John said, Sir, thou knowest. These are they that have come through great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to wear white because he made me that way. He cleansed me. Ain't you glad tonight? You know, although in Matthew 17, uh, that, that he's, that he's, that he's, uh, uh, says he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Now, I got to thinking, that's why Moses came off of Mount Sinai, and his skin shone. He was a glowing when he was in the presence of God. Amen. I, because, uh, and it, does it make sense to you that, that, that in heaven, uh, uh, that, that land does not need the moon or the sun to lighten it. Amen. The light uh, that shined in our heart all these years, uh, amen, is the light of that city. Amen. We ain't going to need no a moon because there won't be no night. It'll be one glorious day. Hey, Jesus shines brighter than the sun. Amen. The S-O-N is brighter than the S-U-N. Amen. And I'm glad that glory that they saw, I'm glad that we can experience that glory 
on this side of eternity. Amen. We can, we can experience the glory of God. And one of these days, we're going to see the glory of God face to face. For though we see through a glass darkly, the Bible says, but then face to face, I still can't get over uh, looking at him face to face. He said, no man has seen me face to face and live. Amen. But one of these days we'll be in a body, a sinless, uh, pure body, uh, that we'll be able to look him eyeball to eyeball. Amen. The glory of God. Pureness. There'll be nothing that will be defiled in heaven. Won't have a body that will defile. That's why this right here can't go to heaven. It's old flesh. That's why your flesh is going to go back to the dust of the earth. There's nothing good at in it. It's been defiled. Now, neither flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of heaven, neither do corrupt I inherit incorruptness. Amen. But we're going to, this corrupt's going to put on incorruption, and this mortal's going to put on immortality. Amen. That is that glorified body. I believe that they saw uh, there on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, they fell asleep. They didn't understand it. Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's make three tabernacles one for thee, uh, one for uh, Moses. One for Elijah, the Bible says that not knowing what, what he was a saying. He didn't understand. He meant well, but he didn't understand it all. Uh, but I believe after the day of, uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, I believe that the Holy Ghost gave him understanding what he saw on the, on the Mount of tra- Transfiguration. Ain't you glad that throughout your Christian life, and the Holy Ghost has given you understanding of things that you've read in the Word of God that you've heard preached uh, all these years and it really didn't I get a good understanding, but the Holy Ghost has given you a glimpse of heaven and given you an understanding that this thing is real. There's nothing fake about it, amen. That heaven is real, that God is real, that the glory of God is real. It ain't just an emotion, friend. Amen. This ain't just something that we've worked up. Amen. It's real when the Lord lives down in your heart. And I'm glad that, hey, this body can only contain just so much of it at once. Right? But I'm glad one day we'll have a body that can contain it forever and ever. It's all the glory of God. The glory of God. Uh, there's Stephen there as he's being stoned. The Bible says his face uh, was as a face of an angel. I believe, I believe that God was shining all over him. What he was, as he was, he he was telling them people and, and preaching to them the word of God and how they 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 didn't want to hear it. They stopped their ears, uh, uh, but God was all over him. I don't believe that Stephen fell to stone uh, because the Bible says that after he saw, he said, "I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father." He saw the glory of God, and the Bible says that he fell asleep. Uh, amen. Uh, anybody that's being stoned that feels it, uh, they to sleep are they I don't believe he failed a thing because the glory of God was upon him amen I believe as God's people we need to be desiring the glory of God when you've got God's backing it don't matter friend it don't matter of all the opposition of this world when God's hands on you it's going to be alright and I believe Peter understood that after after there that he said, he even told Simon, he said, Simon, uh, he said that Satan has desired you to have you that he may sift you as weak. But I've prayed for thee, Simon, that, that, that he said to, uh, that when thou art converted, that you'd strengthen the brethren. And I believe that, I believe that uh, uh, when, he, when he was there uh, after the uh, 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 day of Pentecost there and the Holy uh, Spirit of God came as a rushing mighty wind and, and he began to preach unto them people. And I believe that, uh, I believe a lot of it made sense. Amen. A lot of it made sense to him, and I believe as God's people, friend, as we uh, as as we're nearing home, and I believe we are. I believe we all we're nearing the shore. Amen. Closer than I believe we've ever dreamed about. We're close. Amen. I nobody knows when the Lord's coming back. I can't give you a day. I can't give you an hour. But I've read some signs. Amen. I'm reading the Bible and I know the Bible's being fulfilled. He could come any hour, any 
mighty day. And I say even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm glad of that tonight. But he, as, as he goes on to say there that uh, he said, While he thus spake, there came a cloud. And if you notice there, the Bible speaks of, of the cloud. Uh, that uh, uh, in the, the Bible says that uh, uh, there that, uh, that he led the children of Israel there, uh, 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 a cloud by day and a fire by night. And that cloud, they, they followed there, uh, and that, that cloud... And, uh, you know, and, and represent the glory of God leading them. Now, I thought about also uh, there when Solomon, when he dedicated the temple back to the Lord. He built that temple, a place for God to dwell in. And how that, uh, that the Ark of the Covenant was in. Uh, the, the covenant that God made, uh, you know, with His people there. And so, uh, uh, when they dedicated that, the Bible says that the cloud filled the house. The glory of God filled the house. And, and, and so that the ministers couldn't even minister because the cloud was so thick. The glory of God. And I, and, and I want to say tonight that I'm, I'm glad the glory is still thick if we want to get in it. Amen. If we want it. I mean, a lot of times I believe we get so wrapped up in this old world. We want to desire. We want, we want, to, we want people to like us. And we want to, uh, 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 to be, uh, to be well liked and popular. And I know it, uh, it might not be as much as you get older, but as young people, you, you try to fit in and you really can't find your place. Uh, uh, but I want you to know tonight, if God's uh, uh, glory is upon you and, and the Spirit of God's upon you, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to feel to be feel accepted. Amen. When you're accepted of the Lord. Amen. And and, and, and I, I thought about as, as older we get, a lot of times we set our affections on things of the earth more than we do the things of God. Uh, but what matters more than anything that, that, that we ever uh, set our mind to it is the glory of God and experiencing the glory of God in our life. Amen. And, and, and how that uh, I believe Believe that through uh, Peter, James, and John, when, when they saw this, and they, uh, the, the Bible says that they didn't even say nothing about this. Uh, there, and, and it says here that, uh, and it, uh, it says that, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. And so, uh, uh, how that, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, of of the things that. Uh, uh, I believe the reason why they didn't tell anybody because nobody would understand it. But I believe as they preached after the uh, death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I believe that uh, I believe it. Uh, I, I, I believe it made a lot of sense, didn't it? Amen. And it's still making sense today as we read the uh, the transfiguration on the mount. Uh, how that friend uh, we're going to be transfigured just like Jesus was, and Jesus came and, and he took upon himself the form of a servant. Amen. Man, he transformed himself as a form of a servant, took on himself his old flesh. Amen. Uh, but he came spotless and he left here spotless, so you and I can leave here spotless. Amen. Amen. Why did he come? Because, because he loves you. And he still loves you. And Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Thank God for the for the for the glory of God. I, I think about what Moses, Moses asked the Lord. I mean, he was in he was needing God's direction. And the people were rebellious. And he said, Lord, I'm not going to step another foot until I know that you're going to be with me. Uh, God, you've got to lead us. God, God, we we've got to I mean, the people was sinning and people were turning and rebelling against God. And Moses was, was at his wit's end. And he said, God, I'm going to know you're going to go before us here. And, uh, and he said, show me thy glory. And I believe we, a lot of times we desire a lot of things. But are we desiring to see the glory of God in our life? You know, I thought about this. You know, uh, Sunday night, I, I asked you to pray for revival. And I asked you to pray for revival and see the need of revival in your life. And when every individual looks and, and, and sees the need of revival in her own life, amen, I believe God will, will, will send that what's needful. And we'll desire, we'll desire it when we see the need. 
Amen. And, and I, I thought about things and ways that, that, that we can see in our life and, and reasons that we, we need revival. But, when, you know, when, when we are so caught up in, in the things of this world more than we are in the things of God, we need revival. Man, when, when we're so caught up on, <coughs> on current events and, 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 and maybe and got our eyes and, and affections on things on the earth more than the things uh, 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 up above. The Bible says set your affections on things above, not on things of earth where, mo- you know, moth and rust doth corrupt it. Amen. Where thieves break through and steal. But lay yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt it. Amen. And I'm glad tonight that, that if we'll set our affections on things above. Amen. We'll see the glory of God. Amen. I, I believe when, we, when we're uh, indulged in, in, in so many things in this world. And we, we occupy our time so much in things of this world and we're not taking time for God, reading our Bible and studying God's Word to stay reminded of the things of God, then we need revival. Man, things are keeping you away from God and, and drawing you away from, from, from the presence of God and, 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 and the teachings of God, then we need revival. Man, if our... If our Mind is so full of worldly things, then we need revival. If our if we're if we're more on Facebook than we are in God's book, we need revival. Amen. There's this thing that that pops up on you on your screen. It says the weekly report, how much screen time you've had. I wonder if if God would. Would, would give us a little report of how much Bible we've had in the last week. We need revival. I believe it would show how much we need revival. Because I want to say tonight that we need God more than it. We need God's Word because God's Word's truth. God's Word's alive. God's Word, whatsoever's written aforetime, was written for our learning there in, in Romans chapter number uh, uh, 15, verse 4. Whatsoever written aforetime was written for uh, uh, our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Everything you're facing, everything you're going to face, there's direction in the Word of God. It's better than good. Amen. It's better than Google. God's Word is forever settled in heaven. God wrote it and God, hey, He's smarter than Google is. Amen. He's in control. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He had the first say so and He's got the last say so. And that's the one to be going to to get our answers. To get our answers, to, to seek Him. The Bible said, He said, Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. He said, to Ask and it shall be given. But do we? Do we? You receive not because you ask not. I believe we go without a lot because we're just simply not asking God. Sometimes I feel like we've got it figured out and we, we act as if we don't need God's help. I know we'd never say that, but don't we act it? How much in our life that we'll go and we act as, oh, I've got this, I've got this. No, God's got you. You don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. But God's got us in the palm of His hand. Man, we need the Lord. You know, a lot of times when we feel like we're doing good, all it is is God's given us the ability. We're just not acknowledging it. Man, but, but we, we stand in need. Of the glory of God. Amen. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And, and, and you know he said. He said woe is me. He said for I'm a man of unclean lips. Amen. And, and, but he said there came an angel. T- and took the coals off the, uh, the altar there. And, and, and put it on his tongue. And he began to speak. Amen. That's the only way that we can ever do anything effective. Is it, the help of God. Amen. The word of God on our lips. And being salt of the earth. The Bible says uh, you're salt of the earth. And uh, the only way that we can be salt. Is to have substance about us. And our substance is in the Lord. The glory. 
glory of God, the, 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 the strength of God. And let me say this, and when you get in the glory of God, even in the toughest time of your life, when, when, when the cloud, when, the, when you're resting in the cloud, uh, they said as they walked in the cloud there, the Bible says that, that they heard a voice saying, This is my beloved Son. Amen. Hear him. Another word. Uh, when when he was baptized, uh, that same the spirit of God, uh, the spirit of God descended on him like a dove, and, and he heard a voice saying, "This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased." Amen. I believe we can hear that when we are walking in the glory of God, and when we're when we're pleasing to the Lord. If we would be as much concerned about pleasing God as we are others, I believe that we, we, would, uh, we would see things of God and we would walk in the Spirit more than we would in ourselves a lot of times. Amen? The Bible says to walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I believe we have a hard, hard time uh, overcoming the flesh is because we're walking in the flesh. You walk in the Spirit, amen, and God will help you overcome the flesh. It's a battle every day of our life. We've got to overcome it, don't we? It's called mortifying. It's putting our, our members to death that we may be pleasing unto God. Amen. But it's worth it, ain't it, when we experience the glory of God. We want to see God move. We want, we want to see uh, God uh, 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 come in, 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 in a mighty and great way. We've got to see the need. We've got to see the need for it in our own lives. Amen. See the glory. We, we, need, we need God, uh, God's Spirit and God's touch upon our lives uh, uh, more than anything. I think about what David said. David needed a restoration. David messed up and, and David, uh, David got in a place uh, and, and, and there the, he had messed up but he admitted it. And I believe when, when we admit our wrongs, no matter what it is, say, Lord, I'm sorry, and, 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 and Lord, forgive me. Uh, David prayed that while he was down there in sackcloth and ashes, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I believe a lot of us need to have the joy of His salvation restored to us. If you're not enjoying your salvation, it needs to be restored. Amen. There's something that's caused it. Amen? I believe sin, sin can cause you uh, the joy of your salvation to fade. Amen? Amen? Uh, uh, and and it, did, it did in uh, 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 David's life. Uh, the joy of his salvation was gone because of, uh, of, uh, of, of wrongdoings. We're getting out of fellowship with God. Amen. But what did he say? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. And, and, and listen, we all get out of the way. If we'd all be honest since we've been saved. Amen. We've all sometimes backslid upon the Lord. And, and, and we've, we've lost the joy of our salvation. Didn't mean that we were lost, but we lost the joy of our salvation. But ain't you glad you come to the altar and you say, Lord, I've messed up. Oh, Lord, it ain't nobody's fault but mine. I've messed up. And Lord, I feel like I'm down there in the hog pen uh, smelling that old slop like that prodigal did. But Lord, would you take me back? Amen. God, would you restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit? He said, then will I teach sinners thy way. I believe, buddy, when David, when he got out of the hog pen, I believe, uh, I believe he began to tell people down through his life, I've been where you're at, but you don't have to wallow in that mess. Amen. I've, uh, hey, I've committed adultery just like you did, uh, but you don't have to wallow in it. I've committed fornication like you, but you don't have to wallow in it. Amen. God will not condone it, but God will forgive it, won't he? Ain't you glad of that? I'm glad of it tonight. We can see the glory of God, even though that maybe we've been in the wrong and been guilty. And, oh, but listen, we get forgiveness of it. Amen. We can experience the glory of God. You think about what uh, when that child that he is down there praying for, while he is alive, David was in sackcloth and ashes, and that's what they did to mourn and pray. That's how they did. And the Bible says that how when he, he didn't eat or drink and wouldn't wash himself, but he, he's there in sackcloth and ashes. 
And the Bible says that when that child died, he looked up and he said, is he dead? And they said, yes. He got up and washed himself and began to eat. They come around there and he said, we don't understand something, David. You wouldn't eat or drink or wash yourself while that boy was alive, while he's while he's alive, you, you didn't do any of that, but you laid there and prayed. But now that he's dead, you act like nothing's wrong, nothing's nothing's happened. I mean, that's just that's that's putting it into words there. But he said, we we don't understand this. He said, I can't bring him back, but I can go to him. I, I can't bring back the past. I can't redo the past, but I can redo something about the present. I can do something about now. Amen. You can't bring your past back. and You can't redo it. If money could uh, uh, bring back the past, we'd all be broke, wouldn't we? <laughs> Amen. If br money could buy it back, we'd all be broke. But money can't bring it back. But the blood, friend, will forgive it. Ain't you glad of that? The blood will forgive it, and the blood will set you free, and the blood, the blood will break the bondage there. Amen. Them old chains of doubt, chains of you know the 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 you know the the chastisement to you know and and how that. Uh, but but friend, I'm glad God can set us free from that. Amen. And, and, and again, God don't condone the sin, but I'm thankful He will forgive it and we can see and experience the glory of God and the Spirit of God like we used to. The devil would love nothing more to make you think, well, you, you'll never see it again. You'll never experience it. That's a lie from the devil. Man, if it's been a while since you've experienced that, that reviving spirit and, and, and what, a, what a restoration is, is to bring it back to, to new. You know, an old car, they'll take a car that, that, that's lost its compression or, or, or its power, and they'll rebuild that motor, and they'll, they'll, they'll replace parts that needs to be replaced, and, and seals that needs to be re, uh, sealed, uh, uh, replaced, and, and different things, old rings, and, and, and different parts that, that cause the, that war, that cause that motor to lose its power, to lose its strength, and, and, and maybe uh, uh, to just... Uh, uh, to just uh, stop there. Uh, but friend, uh, I, I, there's been a lot of things in our life that we've allowed to happen. Just like I said Sunday, uh, God, the old devil has no more power over you than you give him. And, and the things that, we, that we've allowed him to do, he, he's, uh, he's caused a lot of damage by just what we've allowed him to do. But I'm glad God can restore that. God knows how to restore you. Amen. He knows how to bring that power back where it used to be. And you may think that because of your bad choices that you make, that, that you'll never experience the power of God like you used to. That's a lie from the devil. Amen. Let God restore you. But how you get restored, you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to say, God, it's my fault. God, it ain't nobody's fault but mine. Quit pointing fingers at everybody and say, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. We've covered up sins uh, too much. We've, we've swept enough under the, uh, under the rug that it's just uh, balled up and we're, we're tripping over it. That makes sense. If you keep uh, uh, sweeping trash under the rug and when you go over that rug, you're going you're gonna, to it, it, you're gonna stumble over it. Amen. We need to pull the rug up and let the Holy Ghost jerk the cover off of us and let Him clean us up. Amen. We know what's hindering us. We stand in need of revival, don't we? And I believe God, God, can, God can restore us and God can revive us and we can see the glory of God. Amen. We can experience the glory of God. Even in this body, even in this body, we can, we can, uh, we can be vessels of honor, not of dishonor. And, and, and just like Moses, his face shone, his skin shone. He was in this flesh, but he allowed God to fill him. Man. He had a choice. So like, oh, you think about Daniel. Now, he purposed in himself that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. We've got a, it's a disciplined way of, of purposing in our hearts that we're not going to defile ourselves with these things of this old world. Hey, Amen. Your mind's a big old place, and what you entertain, it will affect your walk with God. Man, positive or negative, it will affect. And the friends you hang around with, Amen. Christian friends, they'll affect you in a good way. Amen. 
uh, uh, but, but uh, influences are strong, strong. And, 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 and whether it be good influences or, 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 or bad influences, but you hang around bad influences and you will, you will not only maybe uh, 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 adapt, you know, to that, to that lifestyle, but you'll even pick up even the, the mannerisms and, and, and behavior and, and influences is very strong. And, but but uh, but if we'll if we'll make uh, if we'll make uh, good good choices and and those good influences, I tell you, it nothing blesses me more is is to get around people of God that's on the same page. Man, I'm not talking about a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There's plenty of that too. Shamely to say, I ain't talking about hypocrisy. I'm talking about people that's hooked up with God. You need to be around them people. Amen. You need to. You, I ain't talking about somebody that's carrying the Bible on Sunday and a cussing and acting like the world on Monday. I'm talking about somebody that's seasoned by the Spirit of God, uh, that's really, really uh, uh, trying and really uh, uh, that God's upon. You need to be around them people, and you need to stay around them people. Amen. Because they'll be an encouragement to you, and you can be an encouragement to them. Amen. I, but uh, I, I love to I love to be able to talk to somebody about the Word of God, and you begin to share uh, uh, the Word of God with each other, and God begin to uh, uh, dwell, and God to begin to commune with us. Amen. I, ain't nothing better than that, are they? The world don't understand what we're talking about, do they? I was talking to a man one time up at the nursing home. God just began to bless us. And we just standing there, two grown men, just a ball in our eyes. Out and people walking around looking. And I said, only if they, could, only if they knew what we were talking about. And only if they, if they was experiencing what we have. I want people to have what I I'm not making fun of them or putting them down because they don't know what I'm... I want them to know, understand what I'm talking about. I want them to have the joy I've got. I want them to, 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 to have the peace of God. It's like Peter said, silver and gold have an none, but such as I have give I thee. We've got something to offer people. Amen. We've got something to offer people. It ain't nothing we've done. It ain't nothing we've thought up, but it's what's in Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing we've got to offer. Amen. Appreciate the Lord tonight. We need revival. We need the glory of God. We need to experience the, 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 the power of God. You know, when I, I thought about how the, the Word of God purifies us. It really does. Water purifies. The washing of the water of the Word of God, it'll purify you. You know, when you, when you drink a lot of water, it'll purify. It'll wash out the impurities out of your body. Well, same way by the Word of God. The more Word you've got in your body, in your life, amen, your mind, the more it'll be pure. That makes sense? And your mind's a big place, but the more you feed it of that washing of the water, that's why we need to read the Bible every day. Not just read just a little bit, but we need to, we need to get enough of it to, to, to keep our minds and our eyes focused upon the Lord. And wash it, amen, what, with the water of the Word of God and keep our minds pure, amen. And, and, and I believe we'll, we'll experience revival in our life, amen. Thank the Lord tonight for His Word. Every, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, God, for your word. And thank you, God, tonight that we can experience your glory. And I'm glad, God, that, God, that we, can, we can have, uh, God, what, uh, what you have to offer. You've made it, God, possible for us to uh, experience uh, your spirit and your power. And, and Lord, Lord, we need you more than, we, uh, than anything in this world God, we need you more than, than we do uh, uh, natural food or, or water. God, we need man cannot live by, uh, uh, by, by, but by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us all, Lord. God, just challenge us all to accept the, God, to accept, God, the challenge you've given us tonight. God, help us to want revival and see it. See the need in our own life and see the things that are taking the joy and taking the things away, God, that, that's, that's uh, draining us uh, spiritually. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.